Remember the scenario in Part A of this lecture where a cut in your skin healed due to cell division? Well, when that cut was filled in with skin cells, you didn't end up with a grapefruit-sized tumor sticking out of your skin, did you? Of course not. What this means is that turning on cell division is just as important as turning it off when it is no longer needed. This ability is lost in cancer cells, which continually divide, squeezing out healthy cells and spreading throughout the body. Cell division is one stage of the cell cycle. The cell cycle is a sequence of activities that makes up the life of the cell from one cell division to the next. The cell cycle has two major stages, interphase and cell division, which is also known as the mitotic phase. All cells spend most of their time in interphase. Inter is a prefix means in between, so this is a phase in between cell division. Interphase has three stages, gap one, synthesis, and gap two. During gap one, which is also called G1, the cell recovers from division and carries out its basic function. G1 is immediately after division, so the cell takes time to recover from the most recent round of cell division. After a cell divides, it's missing some molecules and organelles, and it's also smaller than it originally was, so during G1, the cell builds lipids, carbohydrates, and proteins, along with organelles. The cell also grows back to its original size. If the cell gets ready to divide again, it enters into the synthesis phase or the S phase. During the S phase, DNA is copied in preparation for cell division. Lastly, the cell enters G2, which is the gap two phase, this is the final preparation for cell division. The cell cycle consists of interphase and cell division, known as the mitotic phase. During interphase, the cell grows and the nuclear DNA is duplicated. Interphase is followed by the mitotic phase. During the mitotic phase, the duplicated chromosomes are segregated and distributed into daughter nuclei. The cytoplasm is then divided, which is called cytokinesis, resulting in two daughter cells. Mitotic cell division consists of two sequential parts, which means two parts that take place in a row. First is mitosis, which is nuclear division, which refers to the segregation of the chromosomes. This is followed by cytokinesis, which is cytoplasmic division, which divides one cell into two. Mitosis gives each daughter cell's nucleus one copy of the parental cell's chromosomes, while cytokinesis gives each daughter cell cytokinesis plasmic components, including organelles like mitochondria and macromolecules besides DNA, like proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates. The two daughter cells that are generated are genetically identical to one another and to the parent cell. What this means in humans is the original parent cell started with 46 chromosomes that were copied, and each daughter cell ends up with the same 46 chromosomes. There are four phases to mitosis, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Prophase prepares chromosomes for movement. Pro is a prefix means before, so this refers to everything that takes place prior to chromosome movement. First, the chromosomes condense further or get even shorter. This makes the long stringy material easier to move across the cell. Spindle microtubules form and bind to the chromosomes at the centromeres. The spindle microtubules will pull on the chromosomes to move them where they need to go. Lastly, the nuclear envelope disintegrates or breaks down. Remember that chromosomes are within the nucleus, so in order for chromosomes to move, the nucleus needs to break down. A duplicated chromosome has two identical sister chromatids that are held together at the centromere region. Mitotic spindle microtubules attach to a disc called the kinetochore. The spindle microtubules will move the chromosome during subsequent phases of mitosis. During metaphase, the chromosomes line up along the middle of the cell, with one sister chromatid facing each pole or each end of the cell. You can remember meta as middle. During anaphase, the centromeres split apart and spindle microtubules pull the sister chromatids to opposite sides of the cell. 
you can remember Anna as a way. During telophase, nuclear envelopes form around both sets of chromosomes at opposite sides of the cell. The spindle microtubules disintegrate or break down since they are no longer needed, and the chromosomes extend back to their original length. All of these events are the exact opposite of what happened during prophase. The four stages of mitosis, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, are followed by cytokinesis. Notice that during prophase, the chromosomes condense further and the spindle microtubules begin to form, followed by the nuclear envelope breaking down. During metaphase, the chromosomes line down the middle of the cell. During anaphase, the sister chromatids pull apart to put one side of chromosomes on each side of the cell. During telophase, a nuclear envelope is built around each set of chromosomes. So at the end of telophase, you have one cell that has two nuclei. During cytokinesis, the cell gets split down the middle to result in two daughter cells that each have a nucleus with a full set of chromosomes. The pictures at the bottom are mitotic cells under a microscope. The chromosomes are stained blue and the microtubules are stained green. Cytokinesis occurs after telophase. During cytokinesis, the cell partitions the contents of the cytoplasm so that each daughter cell will have organelles and macromolecules besides DNA. The cell splits in half to yield two daughter cells. The process is a little bit different in animals versus plant cells because plant cells are surrounded by a rigid cell wall. In animal cells, a cleavage furrow constricts to split the cell in half to yield two daughter cells. In plants, a cell plate that consists of vesicles carrying cell wall material fuse together to split the cell in half. During cytokinesis in animal cells, a cleavage furrow constricts to split the cell in half to yield two daughter cells. In plant cells, a cell plate consisting of vesicles carrying cell wall material fuse together to split the cell in half. Remember the cell cycle discussed at the beginning of this lecture. After cytokinesis, daughter cells enter G1 of interphase. During G1, daughter cells receive signals to grow, differentiate, and to divide again. However, sometimes cells receive signals to die if their DNA is too damaged. Do you know someone with cancer? Chances are that you either currently know someone or have known someone with cancer in the past. Therefore, this is a disease that affects many of us. If you live until 80 years old, you have a 50% chance of developing cancer. This section is covered for interest. It will not be on the unit test or on LearnSmart. However, you will discuss cancer further in the Cancer, Genetic Disorders, and Bioethics blog. In a multicellular organism, some cells divide often, whereas others never divide. For example, in humans, skin cells divide constantly, while neurons in the brain never divide in adults. So how is it that cells know when to start and stop dividing? Cells respond to chemical signals in the body that determine whether or not the cell should divide. For example, growth hormone encourages cell division. A cell also has checkpoints during the cell cycle that ensures that it only progresses through cell division when necessary and when the DNA is intact. I think about these as being similar to seatbelt checkpoints, for instance, in which a police officer ensures that a driver is wearing a seatbelt and won't proceed to drive without putting one on, or DUI checkpoints that ensure a driver is sober and won't proceed to drive drunk. Coming back to cell checkpoints, a cell checkpoint ensures that a cell only divides when necessary and that it won't proceed to divide if the DNA is damaged. The cell cycle is controlled at three checkpoints. The integrity of the DNA is assessed at the G1 checkpoint, proper chromosome duplication is assessed at the G2 checkpoint, and attachment of the spindle microtubules is assessed at the M checkpoint. A tumor results when a mutation inactivates a checkpoint gene causing the cell to divide too often and too rapidly. There are two types of tumors, benign and malignant. 
A benign tumor is slow growing and it doesn't spread. Examples of benign tumors would be warts and moles on the skin. A malignant tumor is a tumor in which the cells break off from the initial tumor and spread throughout the body. This is known as metastasis. Cancer is the disease that results from malignant tumors. Benign tumors grow in localized regions and do not spread to the rest of the body, while malignant tumors break off from the initial point of growth and spread or metastasize to other parts of the body. There are different ways that a normal cell can be converted to a cancerous cell. First of all, individuals can inherit mutated checkpoint genes, which predisposes them to developing cancer. Unrepaired mutations during DNA replication in checkpoint genes can also convert a normal cell to a cancer cell. Environmental factors such as harmful chemicals, radiation, and viruses can also mutate checkpoint genes. Examples of such environmental factors include asbestos and insulation of old buildings, chemicals in cigarettes, ultraviolet radiation from the sun, or the human papilloma virus, which is associated with cervical cancer in women. There are genetic as well as environmental risk factors to developing cancer. On the right, the environmental risk factors are outlined in developed versus developing countries. Cancer treatment includes surgery to remove a tumor, chemotherapy, and radiation. Chemotherapy and radiation target rapidly dividing cancer cells to kill them. Unfortunately, these treatments also kill rapidly dividing healthy cells in the digestive tract, hair follicles, and bone marrow, causing fatigue, nausea, hair loss, and a suppressed immune system. If you've ever seen anybody undergoing chemotherapy and radiation treatment, quite often they get very ill from the treatment.